Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a totally silent mini PC from a company known as Miniax. This is their all new Z100 0DB. So there's no active cooling whatsoever with this unit. The case itself acts as a passive heat sink. We're going to get no sound out of this thing. And overall, it's actually built like a tank. I was pretty surprised by the weight when I first picked this up, but of course the whole top of it is aluminum. We've got some steel on the bottom, but yeah, I mean, the case itself is the passive heat sink and this thing doesn't thermal throttle. It's also a very low power consumption PC that does indie gaming and 4K video playback really well in Windows. They are offering two different RAM and storage variants of the Z100, but inside of the box here, what we're gonna get is a mounting system so we can mount this to the back of a monitor. We've also got some external antennas for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, HDMI cable, and a 36 watt power supply. This mini PC will actually run on 12 volts up to 19 volts, and you won't need much at all to get this thing up and running. And personally, I really do like the way this thing looks. It's very industrial, but we've got some accents on the top there. Lots of I.O. for the form factor, and yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any noise whatsoever. And taking a look at the I.O., up front here, we've got a micro SD card reader, USB Type-C, and this is 3.2. We've also got two full-size USB 3.2 ports and a 3.5 millimeter combo jack. Moving around to the back side, we've got our power input, and as you can see, it will take 12 or 19 volts. We've also got two USB 2.0 ports an Ethernet port, and two HDMI 2.1 ports. These will do 4K 60 out. So, I mean, given the form factor, not bad when it comes to the I.O. side of things. And of course, when it comes to the specs, this is powered by a rather low power Intel CPU. It's actually the N100, and with this, we get four cores, four threads, and a max clock up to 3.4 gigahertz. This chip also includes an Intel UHD iGPU with 24 execution units, and it will do up to 750 megahertz with the N100, up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And if you're familiar with the Intel N100, you know it only supports single channel RAM, so we've got a single DIMM inside of here. I've got one with 16 gigs right from the factory, but you can opt to get a lower end model with 8 gigs out of the box. It supports one M.2 SSD up to four terabytes. We've also got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. Now, before we move into some testing, I wanted to give you a look at the internals here. It's actually pretty easy to get inside. We've got four screws on the bottom. Once we pull this off, you can see it's actually got a little bit of a heat sink here, but the top is really gonna act as the main heat sink for that CPU. And really, this is all we need to do to upgrade that storage. Remember, we can do up to four terabytes with that M.2 NVMe SSD. And we've got a single DIMM here for SODIMM DDR4. Up to 3200 megahertz, this one has a 16 gig stick in it. But remember, you can do up to 32 gigs with this unit. Okay, so I've been up and running for a little while, done a few reboots, installed all of the latest drivers. As you can see, we've got that Intel N100. And again, we've just got four cores, no extra threads here. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 single channel. Remember, the N100 only supports single channel. And of course, we've got those UHD graphics. Not too powerful, but for what this thing's put now and the power draw, given that it's a silent unit, I'm actually really impressed by the performance here. And speaking of that power draw, I wanted to give you a look at what's going on here. We've got core temp. I've also got CPU Z, so we can run a stress test real quick. Jumps up to around 7.4 watts, but we need to put a load on that GPU just to get the maximum TDP because it needs to share all of that between the iGPU and the CPU. And from this, you can see we're only at about 10 watts. I have seen it boost up to around 12 watts every once in a while, so not much at all for this little thing. Temps stay really low for not having a fan belt in either. But of course, we are working with a very low TDP here. And when it comes to everyday desktop usage, I was really surprised at how snappy this thing is. Web browsing, email checking, document editing, head over to their website. As you can see, everything loads up really quickly. And keep in mind, they're offering the Z100 0DB, and they've got a fan model, which will perform better. Just because, uh, you know, we can take that TDP up. We don't have to worry about any kind of overheating or anything like that. Two different models here. One comes with 8 gigs and 256 gigabyte SSD. The other with 16 and 512, but you can always upgrade everything here. You can go up to 32 gigs in this unit. And again, I really do wish that Intel would have set this up as a dual channel chip, but it only supports a single DIMM. 
Next up, I wanted to check out some 4K video playback from YouTube. So what we're gonna do here is just go full screen, make sure we reset this. So we're gonna go back up to 4K, stats for nerds. Just give it a second to buffer a bit. And 4K video playback on the N100 actually works out pretty well. So if you wanted to do some streaming from your favorite sites, like let's say YouTube, you wanna head over to Netflix, Hulu, got you covered there, or you could do native playback from the internal SSD or external. And overall, right now, while streaming this 4K 60 HDR video from YouTube, total system power draw from the wall using a kilowatt meter is a little under eight watts. So that's pretty impressive. I mean, this thing idles at about four watts. So we're just taking it up a bit, getting some video playback out of the way. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And I didn't go crazy with it because I know we're working with a low power chip. But the first one we have here is Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 987 multi 2745. Of course, we could up this by upping the TDP, but out of the box, I mean, we're set there at a 12 watt TDP, keeps this thing nice and cool, even under pressure. And I really wanted to test it like this, but if you wanna see this thing running full boat, let me know in the comments below, I can make another video. I also wanted to test out that Intel UHD iGPU with 24 execution units. With 3D Mark Wildlife, I scored a 2,818, so it's not going to blow anybody's minds. This is not a AAA gaming machine, but we can definitely get some emulation and light indie gaming out of the way. That's the next thing we're going to be taking a look at. Horizon Chase Turbo, over 150 FPS, and I mean, if you wanted a little more out of it, you could definitely drop that resolution down. I believe this game does have the option in the settings. We're at 1080 right now, looks great on this little mini PC, and it's playing just fine. Had a feeling these lighter, easy to run indie games were gonna work great on the N100. Let's go over to one of my favorites right now, Hades. This is one that I should probably drop down to 900p from the settings. You can see it does dip under 60 and then go right back up. I wanted to run this at 120 hertz on this N100, but we will need to take that TDP up. Either way, I don't think it's doing a bad job. If you take a look at Afterburner, we're only pulling a maximum of 8.5 watts from that CPU, and that's CPU and GPU in total. And finally, for indie games, we got one of my favorites here, Shredder's Revenge, running at 120 hertz. And again, Afterburner, up to 6.6 .6 watts. So very low power consumption out of this when it comes to indie games. And another thing we could do with this is emulation. So I'm not gonna go crazy with it in this video. I know we're working with a very low wattage CPU, but emulators like PlayStation 1, even Dreamcast here, will run at full speed. We've got DOA2 using the Redream emulator, upscaled a bit from the settings at a constant 60. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's working just fine. I've got a Bluetooth Xbox controller connected. And the final thing I wanted to check out was some PSP emulation with a harder one here we've got Chains of Olympus. I'm using the DirectX 11 backend. We're at 2X resolution, which still looks great on about a 24 inch display. I think we could probably go up to 3X with this, just checking out the GPU usage and CPU usage here. I mean, we're well under 100%. So 3X should be totally doable on this system. Now, one of the main claim to fames for a mini PC like this would be total system power consumption. And I do like testing this with all of the mini PCs that we take a look at. I've got a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall while I'm doing my testing. We can see exactly what this thing is pulling. And this is total from the PC itself. At idle, only 4.3 watts. 4K video playback jumps up to around 8.2. Average gaming, 10 watts. And the maximum we can get this to pull while doing an extreme test, maxing out the CPU and GPU to 100%, 15 watts from the wall. Now this is at the stock TDP configuration. From the BIOS, you could go in and up this. And I'll tell you that N100 does perform much better at a higher wattage, but you know, I wanted to keep it stock. Not bad at all. I mean, if you're looking for a low power consumption, completely silent PC, and you know exactly what you're getting into, this could be a great option. It's not gonna do AAA games, but you've got some emulation, some light indie gaming, 4K video playback, web browsing, email checking, document editing. Basically everything a normal person does on a PC can be done on this machine just fine. I love the build quality. Actually, it looks like a pretty nice machine. We can upgrade the storage to four terabytes here. And you know, base price on this is 235. If you're interested in learning a little more or maybe picking one of these up, I will leave some links in the description. And like I mentioned, if you want to see this thing with the wattage taken up, let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind making another video.
trying to run this at 20, 25, maybe even 30 watts if we can take it up that high. I think we could definitely extract a little more performance from this mini PC. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.